Films are made up of sequences. Sequences are made up of scenes. And scenes are made up of shots. In previous episodes, we covered lighting, composition, and animation. In this episode, we'll dive into the world of production sound. Boom mic! We got a boom mic. It's a boom mic. This is episode 16 of The Shot List. Production Sound Part 1. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to Studio Binder and turn on notifications to stay in the know on all things filmmaking. Let's speed. All right, roll sound. Speed. There is an oft-cited adage in the film industry. Audiences will forgive bad image quality, but will never forgive bad sound. Since sound began being synced with movies in the late 1920s, filmmakers have pursued audio that augments what an audience sees. As George Lucas has noted, sound is half the picture, and sound often begins with what is captured on set. But in order to record sound well, one must know the basics of its physics. At its essence, sound is a disturbance that creates an acoustic wave through an elastic medium-like liquid, gas or solid. This disturbance comes from a sound source which prompts vibrations in its surroundings. Sound waves can be measured in frequency using the unit hertz, which is the number of times per second that a sound wave repeats itself. Humans can hear between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. To record sound, we use microphones, transducers that convert sound waves into an electrical signal. Different kinds of microphones use different methods to create the signal, which we'll cover in a moment. Today, the analog signals captured by microphones are translated into digital signals. This conversion is measured by sampling rate, the amount of times a sound wave is sampled when it's being turned into a digital signal. The more samples taken, the more accurate the sound will be. Sample rate is measured in kilohertz, though it is not to be confused with frequency. Most sound mixers won't record at a sampling rate lower than 48 kilohertz, and many will record at higher rates, like 96 or 192 kilohertz. Sound mixers must also take bit depth into account. This refers to the number of values an amplitude of a sound possesses. Fewer bits sound like this, while more bits allow for more dynamic range. Typically, a mixer will record with at least 16 bits, which captures 65,536 values. The physics of sound only scratches the surface of the knowledge a sound mixer needs to have. What do you want from theory alone? Let's look at some additional sound terms. Many of the terms you may hear in the sound department on set refer to various pieces of equipment. First, there is the single system versus the double or dual system for recording sound. A single system is when audio is captured directly onto a camera. This makes for a compact setup that is quick and pre-synced for an editor. But most professional sets will use the dual system, where the audio is captured independently from the camera. This typically allows for higher quality sound, since microphones can be placed closer to sources and the recorder can capture in a higher fidelity. No matter the set, a dual system setup requires a recorder. This device intakes the sound being captured by microphones while also allowing for the mixer to control levels in real time. A recorder can be as simple as a Zoom H5, or as elaborate as sound mixer Tom Curley's. Uh, I'm using the uh, Sound Devices 688 
and uh, CL12 system right now. These larger systems typically require a sound cart, which holds the various equipment a sound mixer needs while still being mobile. A sound mixer has several different types of microphones to choose from. The most common is the shotgun mic, a highly directional microphone that mainly picks up sound where it is pointed. A shotgun's directionality can be described through its polar pattern, which illustrates decibels and distance. A shotgun has a low-bar polar pattern. Shotguns are usually mounted onto a boom pole, which allows a boom operator to get the mic closer to the subject. A shotgun can be either a condenser mic or a dynamic mic. A condenser is generally more sensitive and requires phantom power to boost its signal. This is different from a dynamic mic, which is better for capturing and isolating a very close sound source and does not require phantom power. Lavaliers, however, are very common on set. They are small microphones which can be hidden on or near a subject, typically used for wide shots where a shotgun has to be far away. They can also be utilized as a backup for the shotgun's audio, but they lack the frequency balance of higher quality microphones, so mixers often avoid using them as a sole audio source. Lavaliers have an omnidirectional polar pattern, which means as long as they are near the subject, they will pick up their sound. But it also means a mixer needs to be mindful of avoiding the noise of clothing. On smaller sets, a sound mixer may have what is called an ENG-style kit, otherwise referred to as two and a boom. This setup includes a shotgun microphone, two lavaliers, and a recorder. On a higher budget set, however, a sound mixer will typically have a much wider array of equipment. Sound mixers will also use a preamplifier, a device which helps avoid noise interference by boosting the weak electronic signal from a microphone up to line level. Line level is the signal used by other recording and mixing equipment and has a level of plus 4 dBU to minus 10 dBU. Microphones output what is known as mic level, which is minus 35 dBU for condenser mics and minus 60 dBU for dynamic mics, meaning that both require amplification to boost them up to line level. A preamp is generally built into a sound recorder and has two important presets, mic and line. With mic selected, the preamp will accept a mic level signal and boost it up to line level. With line selected, the preamp will accept a line level signal. This setting can be used to add gain to a line level signal. Production sound mixer Michael Carmona explains. There is always noise. If I stop talking right now, that's your noise. My speaking is the signal. You want much more signal than noise as much as possible without distortion, without clipping. Noise can be minimized through a mixer's choice in cables. Cables can be divided into two categories, unbalanced and balanced. Unbalanced cables have two wires and can acquire more noise interference, making them less ideal for long distances. For this reason, Balanced cables like XLRs or TRSs are more often used on film sets. Though they are usually more expensive, they minimize unwanted noise. Some equipment like lavaliers can't be connected via cable. For these situations, mixers use transmitters and receivers, which send and receive signals from wireless mics. Receivers can pick up interference and so they are usually only used if necessary. Often, a mixer will want to isolate certain soundtracks as they are recording. To do this, a mixer will use a pre-fader listen, or PFL. This allows them to diagnose any potential sound issues without altering the mix. These are only a portion of the large swath of sound equipment that may be employed on a professional set. Let's look at the people who use all the equipment. 
the sound department. All the equipment in the world is useless without a talented sound department. Their roles on set can sometimes be taken for granted, but they are crucially important. The head of the sound department is the sound mixer, otherwise referred to as the sound recordist. They are in charge of communicating to other departments, as well as hiring other members of their team. A sound mixer will usually try to get involved with a shoot early, often during pre-production. As production sound mixer Simon Hayes explains. If we collaborate early in pre-production, we can have our voice heard. If we can present a workflow that is logical and creates confidence before we start shooting, directors and, and actors are always going to be open to that. A mixer will typically do their own script breakdown, noting how many characters and potential challenges are present in each scene. Many mixers will color code dialogue and then add these corresponding colors to their mix board so they can adjust levels preemptively. This kind of adjusting that occurs during a take is called running the knobs, where a mixer shifts the gain on a given track for a particularly dynamic sound source. Sir, these orders are from Army Command. You have to read them. Shall we hold back the second wave, sir? Oh, Major, hesitate now and we lose. We're 500 yards from victory. Mixers are also responsible for deciding how to mic a given scene. This often means collaborating with the camera department to understand the framing, and with the costume department to discuss how laughs can be placed on an actor. Many production sound mixers are owner operators, meaning they own much of the equipment that they are using on set, and typically charge for equipment rental on top of their services. This is a unique position within a crew. Another important sound department member is the boom operator. Because the sound mixer will usually be working by their recording station, the boom operator is often the representative for the sound department on set. They physically hold the shotgun in a position where it can best capture sound. Boom operator Ben Ring describes his job. Make sure when you can get in tight, you can get in tight. Watch for shadows, watch for reflections. It's always the same job as a boom op. For a boom op, getting dialogue is almost always the highest priority, since it's much easier to add sound effects in post. The operator's goal is to have as little handling noise as possible, which means avoiding moving their hands on the pole. Typically, a boom op will try to keep the boom pole level with the shotgun pointed toward the subject's mouth. Another position in the department is the sound utility. This crew member largely acts as support for the rest of the team, running cables, charging batteries, and organizing gear. They will often be the ones to distribute interruptible foldbacks, or IFBs, headphones for anyone on the crew who needs to hear the sound being recorded, like the director, producers, or script supervisor. At the end of each day, the sound department will fill out a sound report, a document that gives the post-production information about each recorded track. This information usually includes the file names, channels, scene, take number, starting time code, length, and any relevant notes. Getting great sound is a Herculean effort. A sound mixer has to have an encyclopedic knowledge of both sound and recording equipment, while also having a keen ear for detail. Sound departments are constantly innovating and adapting, and in the end, their work is crucial to the success of a film. In our next episode, we'll look at how the sound team puts all this knowledge into practice on set, both indoors and outdoors. Getting good sound requires a lot of planning. Make sure your movie will sound great using Studio Binder's pre-production software. Remember to subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date on all our videos. Head over to the Studio Binder Academy channel for full filmmaker interviews and in-depth tutorials on creating shot lists, call sheets, and more.
Goodbye for now. And remember, don't forget about the sound guy. Thank you. I'll be right back with you.